So we call this area a Mediterranean world system because the Mediterranean Ocean, which is between Europe and Africa, um, is really a bunch of different small areas, we might call them micro-regions, that share a lot of things in common. And because of those commonalities, they have common features, and we would call that a macro-region, the Mediterranean itself. And so if you look at these maps, it's probably not surprising that the importance of this sea, the Mediterranean, cannot be overstated for these people. Greece has a huge seacoast, tons of islands, lots of bays that provide safe anchorage for harbors. And all Greek societies become excellent seafarers. They explore the Mediterranean, the smaller oceans nearby like the Aegean Sea. They're first doing this for trade, later they establish colonies. If we think about the land, Greece is a peninsula. It's an area of land that juts out into the water. And it's an archipelago, a bunch of islands that stem off of that. And there's about 3,000 of those islands. All in Greece has about 10,000 miles of coastline. So if they are that surrounded by the ocean, if they focus that much time on the water, it's no surprise that they're going to be people for whom the ocean is really important. If we look at the rest of this, um, you can kind of tell from the map that has the brown and the green, but also the Google Earth map, that there are a ton of mountains here and about 80% of all of Greece is mountainous. The highest point is a place called Mount Olympus. It's just a little bit south of 10,000 feet high. Um, Olympus is just 11 miles from the ocean too, which means that it's not just a high place, but it's really high in comparison to the water nearby. So tons of mountains and valleys, which means that developing civilizations in Greece, or actually developing cities in Greece, are largely independent. Think of it this way. If you've ever been at Ferrum and driven to Floyd, you know it is a windy drive up Shooting Creek. So you can do that now, and it's scary, but a hundred years ago you wouldn't be going to Floyd every day. It's just too far. The geography prohibits it. So what that means is, as different cities pop up in Greece, while people might share a language and a religion, they also don't see each other all that often, and they kind of evolve independently. There's not a lot of connection between them. Um, the climate here, it's a really nice climate. It has mild, wet winters, hot but not too hot dry summers, um, not much snow, not too much really, really, heat, not too much, God, not a lot of extreme heat is what I'm trying to say there, which means that it's a lot easier to grow things than many of the other areas we've looked at. They're mainly a grain-based society, um, focus a lot on cereal crops, mainly barley. But mountains aren't necessarily all that conducive to growing crops intensively, so they also raise lots of animals, mainly sheep and goats. Um, so as their population gets bigger and they can't farm a lot, that means that they've got to expand into areas where they can farm. And if you're looking at the map on the left, that means the areas that are flat, and by flat you can tell that they're green in this map. Um, Greece doesn't have a lot of that. It means that they're going to expand outwards and they're going to rely on other areas to produce food that the people there consume. What we'll do next is we'll think about some of the first civilizations that pop up in this area. Actually, the first of them being on that uh, very southern island, the big island in the south of both maps, called Crete. So let's start there.